So here are some practical methods of tri child training. Um, number one, number one, set some ground rules. Okay, you need to have rules in place. This is a very simple first step. This should be obvious. Um, but children ought to know what the rules are. What rules are they're expected to follow from mum and dad? Um, they ought to know that there are blessings by following those rules and that there are consequences for breaking the rules. You know, you ought to have house rules. You know, things like, like you know, some of the rules we have is, you know, there's no playing in the kitchen. We don't want our kids playing and running around in the kitchen because there are, you know, there's a hot stove, there are knives, there are things they can hurt themselves with. These, these are simple rules that we have in the house. You know, some other rules we have is no running inside the house. If they want to run, they can go to the backyard and run as much as they want. But if they were to fall, fall on the tiles, they could really hurt themselves and injure themselves. All right? Um, you know, another rule that we have on, in the house, and I'm not going to go through every rule, of course, but another rule that we have in the house is that they would eat everything that's on their plate. Anything that mum serves them for breakfast, lunch or dinner, we expect them to eat everything on their plate. Okay? And uh, we don't expect them to put anything extra on their plate until they finish what they really have on their plate. So this is a rule that we have in the house. Um, but we also ought to have some rules around church. You know, when, when, we, when, our, when we bring our children to church, we have certain expectations of them. You know, some of the rules I have is that they would sit still. You know, and that's obviously easier for older children. It's more challenging for younger children. But these are things that we're trying to train, train our children to be like. To sit still, to sing the songs, you know, nice and loud, singing to the Lord. Not, not, not for the brethren necessarily, but singing, singing it up for the Lord. You know, and another thing we train our children in church is to greet the brethren. You know, don't just be children and, and, and go out and play, but say hello to the adults. Say hello to everyone. You know, um, four of my four oldest kids are saved and they're brothers and sisters in the Lord to you. So, you know, I, I instruct them, you know, make sure you say hello, say goodbye. Uh, you know, talk to the adults, don't just talk to the children. So these are some rules we have in the church. And of course, you might have some other rules when you go shopping. You know, don't, don't take the candy or the lollies from, you know, don't put anything in your pocket, don't steal, you know. Um, and, you know, I think the easiest way to have these rules is that it doesn't matter whether they're out shopping, out somewhere in public, whether they're at church or whether they're at home, is that try to make the rules as, as, uh, as, as um, similar as possible. Make the rules as similar as possible. So, for example, if you want your children to respect the property at a friend's house, when you go and visit a friend, you don't want them to break something that belongs to others, well, have them respect property in your own house. You know, you don't need to have two types of rules. If you want them to behave a certain way outside of the home, then have those same rules um, in, in place inside of the home. So I think that's the easiest way. So that way they're not confused. Oh, I need to behave this way at church. I need to behave this way at home. Try to be as consistent as, as, as possible. Have the same kind of rules. You know, if I want my children, like I said, to greet the brethren at church, well, one rule that we'll have in our house is that they would say good morning or good night. You know, that when I come home from work, that they would greet me and say hello, right? So don't just expect them to say hello, greet people at, at church if, you're not, if they're not greeting you in the morning or, or saying good night at, at night. You know, try to, be, uh, try to have these rules as consistent as possible. And uh, <clears throat> you can immediately see the problem when mum and dad are not on the same page, when they're not consistent. You know, the child will be unable to determine how to keep those rules. So setting grand rules are important. We see that the Lord God does the same thing in the Bible. When he created man on the sixth day, what did he do? He laid out a rule that they would not eat from that tree. They could eat from all trees except that one, which was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And so, you know, God knows that he needs to set rules in place. Uh, you know, that's, that's step number one. Also, when he delivered Israel out of Egypt, what did he do? When they came to Mount Sinai, God gave Moses the commandments in which that nation were to follow after. So God gave the rules that this nation was to follow after. And so not only is laying out rules a good idea, but it was God's idea first. So we're just following what, how, the, the plan that God has, has put in place. And uh, we'll just go to Colossians now. Colossians 3.20 says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well and pleasing unto the Lord. Children, obey your parents in all things. So children, listen up. Obey your parents in all things, for this is pleasing, well pleasing unto the Lord. So the benefits of setting rules. Number one, it teaches ch your child obedience. 
Okay, if you don't have rules, how are they going to learn how to obey those rules, all right? Obedience is necessary, rules are necessary for them to learn obedience. But secondly, the reason why we place rules is that their obedience pleases the Lord. We want to please the Lord. We want our children. I would, I would want nothing more than for God to look down on my children and say, those children please me. And so this is one reason why we need to have these rules in place so they can be obedient and please the Lord. Okay. So the second method, the first one was, was have those rules in place, set those ground rules. The second method of child training is to lead by example lead by example don't be one of these parents that say you know uh, do as i say not as i do don't be that way don't be don't be don't be that way at all with your children all right because at the end of the day your children will learn a lot more watching you than what you do than what they uh, learn from listening to you okay the reason why your children are so much like you is because they've watched you every single day of your life all right and so they're watching how you behave and they're becoming a small version of you by the way you act. Again, you know, consider our Heavenly Father. He gave us, He has given us faithful men and church bishops to serve as examples for us, to, to serve as examples of how we ought to live a Christian life. Um, he also sent us Jesus Christ to be that perfect example who we ought all to follow and be conformed into. And remember how I said that one of the reasons that we are to raise a godly children is because it helps us, helps us know our Heavenly Father more? Well, you know, I recall a time when I was, I still had television, I still had a television, and I think Isabel was probably about three or four years old. And I used to watch a soccer match maybe once a week or something. Uh, but then you'd have the commercial breaks in between, and I, I never really muted the commercials, I was just blaring all the time. And of course, commercial breaks, you know, you've got the, it pumps out the ungodly music, um, worldly music and images and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I wasn't, I, I didn't, it didn't really bother me at that time until Isabel said to me, Papa, that's evil. You know, Isabel was three or four. She said, Papa, that's, that's evil. And I just thought, you know, she's right. <laughs> you know, my, my daughter's right. Uh, I don't know what kind of commercial it was. It, it didn't matter, but my daughter was right. So, you know, here I am teaching Isabel not to fill her mind with, with wrong kind of things, you know, to fill her mind with whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, of virtue, of praise, things like that, that is outlined in Philippians 4.8. But I was not leading by example. I was filling my mind with rubbish probably, you know. So, you know, I came to realize that if I didn't want my children to watch certain shows or listen to certain types of music, that God would not want me doing the same thing, you know? And, and, you know, I knew that God didn't want me doing certain things, but it's when I realized I don't want my kids doing that, that I realized, well, hold on, I'm a child of God, then I shouldn't be doing the same kind of thing, right? And so, um, you know, sometimes, you know, regardless of, of, of your age or, or Christian maturity, you know, sometimes we can learn from our own kids, you know, <laughs> and just, just apply that and see ourselves as children of God. Um, so it's important to lead by example. You must lead by example, parents. Your life ought to emulate how you want your children to be like. Otherwise, we're simply hypocrites, aren't we? If, if we're training our children to grow up a certain way and we're not following that same pattern, then we're simply a hypocrite. And um, So if you're going to take your children training seriously, be prepared to examine yourself and make those necessary sacrifices so you can be that good example for your children. You know, if you want your children to read the Bibles every day, then make sure that they see you reading your Bible every day. If you want your children to pray, teach them, pray with them, and let them see you praying on your knees. If you want your children to be more affectionate toward you, then take time to be affectionate toward them, hugs and kisses. Show them that you love them. Don't just tell them that you love them. Lead by example. So the third method of training our children that I have here is to teach them Bible doctrine. Teach them Bible doctrine. And uh, we saw this already. Uh, well, actually, no, we haven't seen this. So let's just go there. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 7. It says, He, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Uh, 
we know this verse, don't we? We know this verse quite well. It's repeated a number of times in the Bible that we are to, ought to love out the Lord our God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. <clears throat> Sometimes it says with all thy mind. And we know this as the first and greatest commandment, don't we? And look what it says here in verse number six. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Teach what? Verse number six, and these words, the words of God, teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. God has commanded us, just as he's commanded us there in verse number five, that, we, or, that thou shalt love the Lord thy God. We know that as the greatest commandment. But then he says, just straight after that, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. It's just as important, okay, to love the God of all your heart, as important it is to train our children, the words of God, the doctrines of God, to love the Lord with all their heart and soul. And have a look what it says. It says there in verse number seven. Um, is that verse number seven? Yes, yeah, so verse number seven. When thou sittest in thine house, when you sit in your house. So one reason God gives us a house is to have the comfort to train our children the Bible, to train our children the doctrines of God. It says there, when thou walkest by the way. You know, when you're traveling back and forth with your kids, you know, whether you're driving to church or driving back from church, is another great time to teach your children Bible doctrine. You know, perhaps when you drive home from church today, you know, It'd be good to talk to your kids. So what do you think of the preaching? Did you learn anything at church today? You know, encourage them, ask them questions. See what they understood from church. When thou liest down, the Bible says, when thou liest down, that's when you go to bed, bedtime. <laughs> you know, one thing that we do, you know, with the children, one thing that you can do is just read one verse. I know you're tired at night, but just read one verse of the Bible before going to bed. Make God's word the last thing they think about before going to bed. When thou risest up, morning time, when you wake up in the morning. You know, the, one of the first things that we get our children to do in the mornings is to read their Bibles. I don't know how many chapters they read. Um, I do motivate them though. I do give them $1 for every book of the Bible they finish reading. So that keeps them motivated. But you know, that's one of the things that we, we spend time before they have breakfast. We tell them, look, read your Bibles. And they spend some time in the living room reading one, one, two, three chapters a day. Um, but it's important to start your morning with God's word, is it not? Sebastian, don't touch that anymore, please. Um, and look, you know, there shouldn't go a day where the Bible is not pulled out. You know, I hope you don't have a house where you can't find your Bible or, it, or it's in some drawer when you need to take it out. It's, it's full of dust and you've got to blow off that dust. You know, that Bible needs to be in constant use every day and every part of the day. Uh, you know, what, one of the good things about having a large family is that everyone's got a Bible. So it's kind of like, it doesn't matter what room of the house you're in, you've got a Bible somewhere. Or if, you know, we've got iPads, iPhones now and computers, you know, we've got the Bible on there as well if we need, if we need to pull it out. Um, so, you know, make sure that you're making use of your Bible every day. You know, and, and apart, from, apart from Bible reading, Christina would read one chapter together as a family in the mornings. Um, they would just go over that chapter. The kids are asked to explain what they understood about that chapter. Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get things wrong. It doesn't matter. You know, it's part of the training process for them to, to listen to God's word and to think about what it says and how they can apply it to their lives. You know, we, because we also homeschool our children, a lot of our curriculum are kind of Christian based. They might, they might not be the best Christian uh, curriculum out there. Uh, but, you know, from time to time, uh, the curriculum might say, oh, I'll turn to this verse in the Bible. And, and so they, they can kind of link God's word with what they're learning academically as well. Um, you know, and, and some nights of the week, at least once a week and sometimes more, we have like a family church, you know, where we would sort of do things a little bit more formal, where we would sing hymns, read the Bible, you know, I'd preach a, a small 20 minute message to the family. Um, another thing is I encourage the boys to work on their sermons. They get, they get excited sometimes to work on sermons and sometimes they'll preach for like five minutes or something. And, you know, it, it doesn't really matter how effective those sermons are. It, it's the practice of, of reading God's word, the practice of studying God's word, the practice of putting it in a way that he, they can try to convey to, to the family what they've learned. 
Um, and of course, there's church. There's church time to be here, gathered together, and you know, a, a great time to learn more. Now, I didn't say those things in a boastful way. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just putting those things out. You know, that's what I do as a, we do as a family. Maybe it might give you some ideas of how, what you can do at your, in your home. And we're not a perfect family, but you know, it is vital to pass to your children what you have learned. Okay, there are so many men, good men, good godly men in the Bible that did not pass on Bible teaching to their children and failed. I mean, we're not going to go through those men right now, maybe another time, but there is so many men that were great men of God, did not train their children properly, and they turned away from the Lord. So it's important that we, don't, that we learn from their mistakes and we don't do the same thing. We need to teach our children doctrines of the Bible and increase their learning. You know, some, some doctrines that we've learned has taken us many years, many years to learn. Sometimes I get frustrated and I think, man, why didn't I know this before? I wish I knew this earlier and I wouldn't have made these errors and mistakes. You know, you consider that. Consider the fact that we, there are doctrines that have taken us a long time to learn. I don't want my kids to go through that process. I might as well just teach them so then they can excel past what I know uh, in their studies as they grow up. So let's move on from there. Another method of training your children is to encourage them to ask questions. Encourage your children to ask questions. Now, I'd admit this is actually a personal weakness of mine. Uh, you know, when I explain something to my children, I expect them to remember what I said, to carry out the instruction perfectly. You know, I get kind of annoyed when my kids come back and, and ask a question about it, you know. Uh, it, it is something I'm trying to work on. Uh, you know, I, I can get frustrated if they don't follow through with an instruction I've given them. But you know, this is not how God treats his children. I just want to show you this in, in the book of James. Chapter 1, verse 5. The Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, okay, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and, up, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Okay, so we see that God is not this way. Um, God wants us to ask questions. God wants us to ask for wisdom when we need it. And it says that God will give it to all men liberally. That's to say without constraints. God's not going to hold back his knowledge. God's not going to hold back his wisdom if you need it. It means that he's generous and forthcoming with information. Okay? I mean, the fact that he's given us the Bible should prove to us that God wants us to have his wisdom. God wants, us to, wants to impart his knowledge onto us. And so God does not hold back wisdom to those that ask. It also says here, and upbraideth not. To upbraid is to criticize. To upbraid is to be severe or to treat with contempt. So God is not critical to us when we ask him for wisdom. He doesn't roll his eyes. You know, he doesn't sigh or get frustrated that we haven't understood that first time. You know, he is willing to work with us, to guide us, to instruct us openly and freely through life's journey. And again, I said, you know, this is one of my weaknesses. I kind of get frustrated when my kids don't understand what I've said to them. And I shouldn't be that way. I should be looking at how God treats us, how he's willing to give us wisdom. He's willing, he's, he's wants us to ask questions. Uh, and that's how we ought to be as parents. So I'm speaking to my children right now, okay? And to other children in the congregation. You know, please ask questions if you need clarity. Please ask questions if you need to. Don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, if you have something that you don't understand, if you have questions about life, if you have questions about the Bible, you know, if you have questions about your education, ask mum and dad. It's important. You know, God would want mum and dad to, uh, to use your questions to help raise and train you better. 